Today we are here to discuss Carnot's engine. Well, a Carnot's engine is a hypothetical and an ideal engine whose efficiency is 100%. This kind of means that since it is ideal, if you supply Q amount of heat to this engine, its entire heat that you have supplied to it will be converted into work. And this cannot actually exist because it kind of contradicts to the first law of thermodynamics, which means that there is no engine in this entire universe that can completely turn Q, which is the supply energy, to work. Okay, so moving on with the concept of Carnot's engine, let us first know who introduced this hypothetical engine. It was French scientist Sadi Carnot who came up with this concept of Carnot's engine. Okay, so let us first know how this Carnot's engine actually works. Now, a Carnot's engine is basically a heat engine and this converts heat energy into mechanical energy and since this is a heat engine this works between a heat source at temperature T1 and a heat sink at temperature T2 Let's say that our engine is basically this. Our engine has a movable piston over here and under this piston we have ideal gas over here. Now let's say that in its initial condition over here the thermodynamic coordinates are V1 and P1. Let us now plot the Carnot's engine according to the PV diagram concept over here. The initial point of our Carnot's engine be at point A where the thermodynamic coordinates at of this are V1 comma P1. Okay so if we follow this we can say that for the first step the Carnot's engine goes from a particular A to a state particular B and for this to happen our Carnot's engine over here is placed in our heat source and since our engine is placed in our heat source it goes from V1 comma P1 to V2 comma P2 where it goes to a thermodynamic expansion an isothermal expansion to be precise because the temperature is constant right so we know that an isothermal curve kind of looks like this, right? So over here at point B, we have V2 comma P2. And this entire act is being occurred under constant temperature. And thus, this is an isothermal expansion, right? Okay. Moving on to step Two. In step 2, it goes from a state B to a state C where this engine is placed in an insulating, an insulating material. And since this entire thing is placed in an insulating material, we can say that the DQ, which means the transfer of heat from the surroundings to the system, is basically zero. DQ is basically zero, right? And since DQ is zero and it goes from state V2, P2 to an expanded state of V3, P3, we can say that an adiabatic expansion has taken place, right? And we know that an adiabatic curve is steeper than an isothermal curve and thus it will look kind of like this. Over here, we can say that an adiabatic expansion has taken place where dq is basically zero right moving on to our third step in our third step it goes from c to d and from going to c to d this 
engine of ours is placed in our heat sink. And since this is an adiabatic contraction, since our heat sink absorbs heat energy, so we can say that our volume has decreased. So third stage at D, we can say that at D, it is V, it is V4, comma P4, and our isothermal contraction has taken place that from going from V3, P3 to V4, P4, an isothermal contraction has taken place under temperature T2. And over here, this is T1. Okay. And at our final step, it goes from D to A. This is our final step of 4. And from going from D to A, we see that our system has gone through an adiabatic, an adiabatic contraction, right? Since it is going from V4 to V1. And it is clear that V1 is less than V4, right? So from going from v4 p4 to v1 p1 and adiabatic contraction has taken place so here we go this is the mechanism of a carnot's engine now we want to calculate the work done in an entire carnot cycle how do we actually do that well we can say that the entire work done is basically the enclosed area of this curve so let's proceed with our calculation of the work done in a Carnot cycle. In our Carnot cycle, from going from A to B, the work done is basically that of an isothermal expansion, which is basically nRT1, the natural logarithm of V2 over V1. And from that, for WBC, from B to C, we have an adiabatic expansion, and the work done is basically R over gamma minus 1, T2 minus T1, the final minus the initial, right? And that for going from WC to D, we have, this is basically NRT, the natural logarithm of V, V4 over V3, right? The final, and this is the initial, right? So for that, for WDA, that is basically R over gamma minus 1 and in bracket we have T1 minus T2. Over here the temperature is T1 and over here it is T2. Right? Okay. Sorry for the interruption but if you're interested in having more educational contents then please go and join NodeBasket. NodeBasket is an educational group that provides tons of educational materials for free. I'll slide in the link to NodeBasket below in the descriptions. For now, let's continue with the main topic at hand today. So we can say that the area enclosed in this cycle is basically the network done, right? So the network done can be represented as WAB across this plus WBC across this minus the area enclosed by WCD, which is below this, and minus the work done along this process, which means from D to A, which means the area under this. And thus, here you go. This is the network done in a Carnot cycle. Well, that's all.